Good morning. It is February 26th, 2024. Um, beautiful day here in Atlanta, Georgia. It's going to be in the 70s today. We have most of the daffodils up in our yard, which is which is really cool. Um, won't be long before um, before we start to see uh, stuff blooming. Um, Pretty soon we'll have that yellow crap that gets all over your car, which is a real feature of the Atlanta spring. And uh, once we get the yellow crap on the car, um, you could write your name in yellow crap on the windows and whatnot of your car. After that comes uh, comes the Masters at Augusta, which is a absolute wonderful thing. Uh, I've had the great good fortune to have uh, gone to the Masters a couple times to the tournament, and it was. Uh, just beautiful. I think my favorite memory of Augusta uh, is uh, at the end of the uh, tournament the first year I went, which was uh, 2004, your Phil Mickelson won for the first time, uh, walked out of the, uh, the course barefoot, walking along um, kind of out the back way, and was able to go up uh, a number of the, the fairways barefoot. The grass was beautiful. I've never seen anything like it. Just fantastic. Anyway, um, another good week of, of swimming last week. We had four uh, good workouts, um, a little over 18,000 yards, um, and uh, so it was it was good. Again, um, having some uh, surprisingly good uh, performances and workouts. Um, I think uh, sort of being a little bit careful about diet and, 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 and not drinking has been really has been really helping the swimming. Um, also had uh, opportunity this weekend to play a little bit of golf. Weather, as I said, is warming up here in, in Georgia. Um, now we play most of the year. Um, being being from the north, um, I'm one of those morons that's that's out there on a 40 degree day playing golf as if it was uh, you know, as if it was the middle of spring. But uh, you know that's just based on where I grew up. It's a um, I didn't play golf actually a lot growing up. Um, I, I, I picked up the game when I was about 30, um, much to the chagrin of my grandfather, who had been a really quite a quite a good golfer, a uh, golf pro his whole his whole life. And uh, you know it's 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 interesting uh, my relationship between golf and swimming, which really are the two sports that I engage in at this point in my life um and uh you know and I've, I've always known and been aware of golf and you know when you're five six uh 170 pounds golf might be a better sport than uh, than swimming i don't know whether you've ever watched uh swimming like in the olympics on tv or something but but one of the things you'll notice is that the swimmers are, are mostly really tall uh you know, guys like cullen jones and matt grievers and um, Michael Phelps. I mean, they're all you know, six four to six seven, six eight. Um, uh, five foot six and a half doesn't really <laughs> measure up too too well. And uh, but you got to keep a sense of humor about it. So um, it, it's interesting though because in what I've noticed, um, I, I do have in swimming the the proverbial 10,000 hours log you know as a, as a kid I, I swam a lot um, you know in, in, in high school two a days college for part of college or most of college two a day practices so you know I, I, I've logged the requisite hours there and and did a lot of it um, you know when I was you know, I started in competitive swimming when I was probably eight or nine and you know got a little bit more serious about it when I was 11 or 12 and so I was I was doing it at a, at a time in my life where you're, you know you, you was it neuroplasticity or I don't know whether that uh, what the relationship between neuroplasticity um, and uh, and muscle memory is but I'm sure that there's there's some correlation between those two things and in any case um, I was swimming a lot at the time when muscle memory types of things were being formed and uh, you know it's it's interesting now when I go and swim at 62, and um, you know I'll, I'll be doing things, and, and someone that that may be a good athlete but didn't grow up with a background in swimming will get in and swim, and they're every bit as you know cardiovascularly sound. Perhaps they're a runner or, or, or something like that, so they're you know, in good shape, been a good athlete their whole lives, and when they try to swim, it just doesn't. 
it just doesn't go the same way it does with me. I mean, there's a facility um, gliding or whatever, just an efficiency that, that you have from years and years of, of, of doing the swimming. And so that's, uh, that's certainly in there. Now, now I contrast that, the, the sort of the 10,000 hour born um, uh, efficiency in swimming with, uh, with my total lack of efficiency in, in golf. Um, you know, I have decent hand-eye coordination. I played baseball and hockey as a, as a kid. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Um, I'm a 13 handicap, so I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not totally horrible out there, but I think that's probably about as good as I'm ever going to be able to get. Um, and, and the reason isn't that I don't like to practice and that I don't like to play and that I'm not, you know, semi-serious about it. The reason is that there's just a, a muscle memory for me that, that doesn't exist um, like, like it does in swimming. I mean, I, I can, you know, think swing thoughts all day long, and, and unless you have the, the, the sort of... Uh, I think for most people, unless you did it a lot when you were younger, it, it, it's, it's hard for those things to sort of to sort of take beyond a certain level of, of, of basic competence. Um, and I do love to play golf. And um, you know, I, I came to golf, um, as I said, my grandfather was a, was a golf pro, and he wanted me to play when I was a kid in the worst way, sort of taught me to swing a club, although... I played hockey and, and hit a baseball left-handed, and uh, he made me golf clubs when I was, you know, nine or ten that, that were uh, little kid golf clubs that uh, were right-handed. So I played golf right-handed because that's how he taught me how to play, um, and I didn't really have much um, much use for it, to, to, to be honest. And, um, you know, I, I played a little, and, and actually I worked um, at, a, at a country club as a lifeguard, when I was uh, in high school, and it was a it was a club that had a uh, it was a Donald Ross golf course, really nice golf course, and um, you know it was, uh, it was uh, I had the ability should I wish to play on Mondays, which I did occasionally, but we just swatted around. We didn't take it too seriously. I didn't didn't really think about it, and uh, you know my, my grandfather. Actually, the last time I ever played golf with my grandfather. Uh, was at this was at this golf club where we we went on on Monday and uh, uh, I was impressed by two things um, the, the the club pro was not too thrilled uh, at the prospect of the lifeguards coming out to play golf he kind of thought we were jackasses and and, and made that opinion very uh, very apparent to us and so uh, when we showed up and and I had asked in advance if I could bring my grandfather he's like ah, you go fuck yourself but I think the uh, I had four years in at that club at that point working, and so I guess that, okay, you bring your grandfather. I show up with my grandfather, and the pro just, his eyes got like this. He says, oh, my God, you didn't tell me your grandfather was Tommy Meehan. <laughs> and so apparently this guy, the, the, the pro at this golf course, a guy named Hal Miller, had, uh, had been a junior pro at a course where my grandfather had been the head pro. And, and my grandfather, was, Hal was kind of, uh, my, my grandfather was a mentor to this guy, and so, uh, boy, everything changed after that. You know, it was oh my gosh, you know, you know, anytime you want to come, Tommy, it's so good to see you. And so at this point, um, I was I was probably 18, and, and my grandfather was 80, and uh, he shot 78, so he shot his age that day, uh, which is amazing. And the thing about my grandfather's swing, my grandfather was not a large man; he was probably five foot four, five foot five. Um, and he had great tempo, but he also had a very whippy swing. And it, he'd be set up and it'd be very peaceful and calm, and then boom, boom. You never even hardly saw the club, and he hit it, he hit it dead straight every time. It was amazing. He was a very good putter. Um, he had won a couple of pretty big tournaments, you know, as a younger man. Actually, came to golf. Um, Growing up, his parents had emigrated from Ireland, and uh, he grew up uh, as a as a caddy um, at a at a golf club in St. Louis, um, and went into World War One. And really, the thing that kept him out of the trenches uh, was his ability to teach generals and other officers how to play golf. So, I guess uh, at some level, I, 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 he probably owes 
not getting blown up in a foxhole and I owe my existence to, uh, to, to golf. But that said, as a, as a teenager, I didn't really give a shit and didn't, didn't have too much interest in golf. And there, therefore, I didn't spend a lot of hours practicing and I really wasn't all that good at it. Um, and, and so um, you know, years passed and um, I was at a, uh, actually at a, at a reunion, a five, five year reunion of my um, graduate business school class and was playing golf at, at a pretty fancy club with one of my uh, with one of my um, fellow alums from from, from the class and uh, discovered you know this is this is pretty fun of course these other guys were a lot better than me having grown up playing but you know the, I, I had, as I said decent hand eye coordination and kind of stuck with it and and discovered that I really do truly like the game and uh, wanted to play of course by then my grandfather was was gone unfortunately so uh, he couldn't he couldn't really come in with lessons but I've been you know somewhat self-taught and 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 uh, and, and it's interesting and, and the point that that I'm hoping to make with all this is in a sport like golf where you know I don't have the 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 background the 10,000 hours etc cetera, etc cetera, but I play enthusiastically and I'll I'll compete like in the club championship and uh, or, or other other competitions of that ilk and you know I walk up maybe hit two three balls putt or two and let's tee it up man let's go and uh, I, my, my attitude towards those competitions is not real real serious um, uh, this will be the first year that I that I compete without free beer on the golf course if I continue to not drink beer so that's going to uh, that'll change uh, I may find myself uh, playing pickleball that day instead we'll, we'll have to we'll have to see I'll, I'll, I'll let you know but you know it, it's I just don't really give a damn but I play you know enthusiastically and, and, and do do love to play uh, I've been playing with a group uh, we played Sunday group for almost 20 years of uh, what um, I think I saw John Updike describe once as a companionably inept foursome which I've been uh, uh, really blessed to be part of for, for nearly 20 years and, uh, and we know each other's horrible games backwards and forwards and uh, and that's a sort of a comfort and we uh, we compete to see who has to tip the guy in the bag room at the end uh, the loser tips so that's our that's our big stakes game on, on on Sundays that I've been involved with for years and years but you know it's I contrast that with swimming, where I, I'm, I'm considering competing in a, in a swim meet, a master's swim meet, in um, about three weeks' time. And uh, yeah, I think I, I think now after three months at Dynamo swimming, you know, initially three times, now four times a week, getting up, uh, you know, over 18,000 yards a week, doing some strength training. Um, you know, I think I'm now after three months of this getting to the point where I could consider entering a competition so this thing where I have the 10,000 hours and I have the ability to glide efficiently in a way that non-competitive swimmers as kids don't have um, I don't have the same grip it and rip it perhaps attitude um, just uh, uh, you know sort of get up and get up and play now I need to really be in, in decent shape and uh, the good news is I do think I have enough in the tank in terms of my training to do a little bit of a taper for this meet, so that that'll that'll be good. So um, that's uh, coming up uh, in, in in just just under three weeks' time. So we'll keep you posted there. Again, the end of the the the, the first of the month, first of uh, March is uh, is Friday, leap year. So the 29th is Thursday. And uh, I'll be uh, reaching back out on um, Thursday in the United States, right at uh, midnight in uh, in Great Britain, to uh, see about arranging for a for a boat captain for summer of 2026. So uh, again, that's uh, a little bit more planning and, and forethought, as opposed to just just walk up to the tee and uh, and uh, let it let it let it rip. But it, you know, again, I think both of those activities in terms of athletics or whatever they are are, are, are valid and, and are good uh, good pieces to have in, in one's life I mean it's good to have something that uh, that you know you continue as long as you keep the passion you continue to uh, continue to try to improve in, in areas where you do have uh, you know a, a lot of background and the 
the proverbial 10,000 hours, and then other places where you're just trying to expand into new skills, but realizing that, that, that there may be some limitations there. So anyway, that's kind of what I'm, I'm thinking about this week. Um, again, uh, I think the, uh, the anti-Valentine song, um, I, I tell you, uh, it, it just, it just didn't, didn't really work. I just never got to where it needed to be this week. Um, I don't quite have the 10,000 hours of guitar playing, um, but I'm not quite a complete, um, a complete inept guitar player. I'm somewhere in the, in the middle. Maybe there's a 5,000 hour um, place, or maybe it's 10,000 hours with an asterisk, where the asterisk is, this guy's got no talent. So not quite sure which it is, but... Um, um, I, I think the anti-Valentine song, and perhaps it's best to not put those those sort of negative things into the world anyway. So um, I will play music again at some point, but but it'll be a happy song, maybe. Maybe one I made up, because the ones I made up, I, I don't have to worry about learning, because I already, in theory, know them. Anyway, um, thanks if you're watching. Um, subscribe. Um, um, we're, we're beginning to uh, try to learn how to do this YouTube thing, and... Um, Again, this the, the, the this is largely about the, the journey of a late middle aged guy trying to do a big open water swim, but there's some other crap that we'll be doing along the way. So thanks and have a great week.